Learning about black history's inspiring characters gives Vonda Michaud Nelson hope. Showdown, Indian Territory, 1884. Jim Webb's luck was running muddy when Bass Reeves rode into town. Webb had stayed one jump ahead of the lawman for two years. He wasn't about to be caught now. Packing both rifle and revolver, the desperado leaped out a window of Bywater's store. He made a break for his horse, but Reeves cut him off. Bass hollered from the saddle of his stallion, warning Webb to give up. The outlaw bolted. I ride to figure out where I fit in to all this going on around me. I can write my way through something that's unpleasant mm -hmm. and hopefully at the end of the process, the journey, I've come out knowing more, understanding more, feeling stronger, more confident that I can make it through. I find that interesting because you, I, I love how you frame it as a as a forward moving process, yet you, you deal a lot in history. And so yes. it's like forward and backwards. How, do, how does that dynamic work? Well, as my uncle Lewis mm -hmm. always said, you can't really understand yourself. You can't move forward until you understand where you came from. Mm -hmm. For me, there really wasn't much black history when I was mm -hmm. growing up in the schools. As a writer and a researcher of history now, I think I'm playing catch up. Hmm. Um, I missed so much of that history when I was young and now as an adult to be learning about events and people uh, from my culture who have um, accomplished great things mm -hmm. that I think if I'd known about those when I was younger, mm -hmm. it might have had an effect on my image of myself as a young black child finding her way. And well, in your very famous great uncle, Louis Michaud, uh, is, is part of No Crystal Stair. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came into being? That book started out as family history. Mm -hmm. I um, had, I, I always knew my uncle owned a bookstore in Harlem, but I never really understood the significance of it as a young person. It was more about just learning about my uncle and family mm -hmm. history. The more I learned about his journey, uh, to finding the books, to finding his calling mm -hmm. in books, uh, the more I felt that this is a story that um, all people should know about. Snooze, Harlem teenager. Yesterday I go into the bookstore and give the professor the closed fist salute. What's that, he asks. Black power, I reply. Cool. Where'd you learn that? Mr. Michaud asks. The brothers in the movement, I say. Open your hand, Mr. Michaud says. I do. See, you ain't got nothing in it. He picks up a book, puts it in my hand, and says, now that's power. Tell your brothers in the movement that black is beautiful, but knowledge is power. He started out um, on a very rocky path as a young person, and books saved him. And then he went on through his bookstore Mm -hmm. to save other people who came to the store and learned from him and learned to grow through books themselves. The, the National Memorial African Bookstore. Yes. yes. I started to retell the story of my great uncle in his bookstore through the voices of the people that knew him, his family, people who came to the bookstore, and through documents. So what is your process for deciding when a character is going to be used and how. I love character. Mm -hmm. uh, that is really what drives my work. If I cannot connect and care about the character, then I don't really, I'm not as interested in the storyline. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like to try to figure out what drives a person, their motivations and their, their deepest feelings. Uh, and sometimes my character kind of takes over and takes me in a direction mm -hmm. that I didn't plan on going, but I try to just follow. And that is really one of the joys of writing and researching is the discovery. Mm -hmm. Usually I start with the questions I wanna know about this person, like my, my, my great uncle Lewis, like Bass Reeves. Mm -hmm. You stumble on something and you get excited about 
wow, who is this person? Why don't I know about him? And how can I find out? So with respect to Bad News for Outlaws, what, uh, what about Mr. Bass Reeves? What did you figure out along the way with that character's exploration? Bass Reeves um, blew me right out of the water. He was physically strong, but he was also incredibly intelligent. Couldn't read, he was a former slave, but I think he might have had a photographic memory. Mm -hmm. That's something that I, I think I might have figured out. Sure. He was an expert marksman, yet he chose to only use his weapons when he absolutely had to. He chose instead to use his wits. Mm -hmm. He often um, used many disguises uh, to get close to criminals. Mm -hmm. He was a deputy marshal for 32 years and brought in over 3,000 criminals. Mm. If I had a book about Bass Reeves when I was a child, um, then it might have made a little difference again in um, how I saw myself. Um, here we have someone, a hero, that was a person of color that, um, that looked like me in a way that I could see as the, that presents a possibility for what you can accomplish in the world. Learning about my own family history and the history of others, I think it gives me hope. When I see the resilience and the courage of people who survive in spite of the ugliness that sometimes we have to deal with, That makes me believe that there's hope for me and for everybody. And we hope writing presents possibilities. Yeah. This part about hope you talked about, um, personally, that, that it gives you hope, why is that important to young readers? Wow, I think without hope there's not a lot. I mean, that is maybe one of the most important things that young people need to continue to have because as we know, there's a lot going on that they have to deal with. I know what books have meant for me from the time I was a young child up until now. Uh, they make me laugh, they make me cry, they make me angry sometimes, they make me learn and change my mind about things. And I love that about them. And as a writer, I strive to accomplish that for others every day. That's when I sit down to write. I want to touch readers in the way that I was touched and the way I grew and have grown through books. And I hope my writing, um, what I put on the page, can affect somebody else in that same way.